All right, joining me now to take a look at this morning's subway shooting from a law enforcement perspective, former FBI agent, News Nation security contributor, Phil Andrew. Phil, thank you so much for being with us. So, you know, we heard from Paul Gerke in his report there that the security cameras in much of the surrounding areas weren't working. How much does that concern you? knowing what you know about how searches like this go. Yeah, that's a big setback for the investigation because clearly the uh, perpetrator uh, would have gotten access to one of those areas and probably egressed from one of those areas. That's a great opportunity to get a snapshot of them and then really contribute to the efficiency of the, this investigation. Now they're going to have to move to video cameras that are probably um, co-located um, from the neighborhood and that just takes that much more time to review that uh, obtain it and, and the amount of time investigators have to go through the footage. So, you know, this happened this morning during during the morning commute. It's now at this point, we're well into the evening, especially in New York. We have to think, you know, East Coast time. Does it concern you that now they are searching? I mean, you know, that van may or may not play a part. Obviously, we're still waiting to hear from authorities. Um, you know, but looking at this video, I and mean, this is from hours ago. Here we are now. It's almost 615 East Coast time. And this guy, you know, apparently is still out there. It's definitely of concern, but what it what we have in early indicators are that uh, this might be a lone actor um, with a single handgun and a hatchet. Um, there may have been other things planned. Maybe that van is involved, but it's been secured, mm -hmm. and that uh, there doesn't seem to be an ongoing threat in terms of a, an additional plan. So for me, this suggests that this is um, you know a bit opportunist that uh, may be targeted. Maybe they're targeting this particular neighborhood and the population that lives in it, um, or somebody with um, um, that is emotionally disturbed. But the early indications are that this isn't terrorism related and we don't expect additional attacks. Well, you know, if I'm gonna dig into that. So, so early indications, you know, you just say right there, that it's not terrorism related. Obviously, there are certain indicators, there are certain clues that go into that, but it's so early. You know, if this man is not even in, you know, yet in custody, how can we say that it's not terrorism related? Usually we were matching that with whatever chatter, whatever other intelligence, um, whether there has been a threat, whether there's uh, a cell in the area planning something, mm -hmm. and, um, and then a lot of eyewitness information about um, how this went down. But this is a very easy to obtain firearm. This is a very easy to obtain uh, smoke device, and it's targeting a really kind of a soft target. So um, that suggests that this was not somebody who was trained, somebody that is affiliated. They may still have a, a motivation that's right. political or um, race or um, some sort of motivation like that, right. but it doesn't seem to be connected with a larger terrorist organization. Well, Phil, talk to us just about how, you know, the, the investigation process at this point, because, you know, when I look, I see all of those reporters there on the scene. You know, we saw people on scooters. We saw people walking by with their cameras up. Obviously, you know, at this point, it's hours after it happened, but it, you know, I'm somewhat surprised to see that that area isn't more locked down. I mean, I know we're talking about, you know, here's a live look right now. We're talking about a major city. We're talking about Brooklyn, a borough within New York City. Obviously, huge population. There's only so much, I would imagine. Yes. That you can lock well, down, remember but. that the crime scene is underground. Mm -hmm. Very easy to secure by closing right. off those entrances and egresses and mm -hmm. the tunnels. The trains aren't running. So, um, but closing off that larger population where so we may or may not have any information that the person is still in. Right. Um, and this is a very heavily su surveilled su city, city, that they are gonna fall back to cameras and uh, patrols, looking for the description of the individual and looking at uh, tertiary crimes. Did, is there a stolen vehicle? Was there a break-in? And looking at those uh, indicators to see if they can track this person down. You know, if I have another question, and you know, this may be a tough one, so it, there may not even be a right answer to this, but I think, you know, we went out to Evan now in D.C. saying that there's heightened uh, concerns, obviously, on mass transit systems all across the country at this point. You know, you see things like this. People aren't going through metal detectors to get into a subway system. Obviously, at some point, we have to have trust in our fellow citizens. But if something like this happens, and we heard Tom Negabin say the conductor had instructed people to get back in the car, get back on the train. Is that the correct thing to do? Because at that time, they don't know where the shooter is. Well, uh, the, you know, the conductor might have. Okay. The, the conductor might have video into the cab mm -hmm. 
and actually see what's happening and know where the perpetrator was. So right. we don't know all the details of that, but this, in, in this circumstance, it seems like it was the right command to give the crowd to uh, spare, uh, spare lives and injury. Right. And so right now we're, we're taking a live look, waiting for an update from authorities on the latest on this early morning rush hour shooting uh, in a Brooklyn subway car. And, you know, Phil, again, we know that this, this, this person, this suspected shooter, has, has been on the run at this point. But we see that authorities are focusing in on that U-Haul van. When you see that footage, knowing what you know, what are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking maybe this U-Haul fan was brought in with additional um, explosives, supplies. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was simply the way that this person transported themselves. Um, very easy to rent a U-Haul, you know, and that's how they transported themselves from wherever they originally came from. Right. But they're going to treat that van as if it's its own crime scene and potentially have its own dangers. So that's going to take some time for them to approach that carefully, you know, with a bomb squad and make sure that they've cleared it completely before they move to uh, collect additional evidence. And, and my last question for you, you know, obviously we hope at some point they're gonna bring this shooter into custody, but the investigation obviously doesn't end there. Walk us through a little bit of that. Yes, it, once this, this uh, assailant is located, uh, a deep interview, a deep scrub of their background, where they've been for days, weeks, months in advance of this. And they'll be looking deeply into any anybody that may have supported them financially, a ride, uh, somebody that might have rented that, that U-Haul. Everything will be scrubbed for indications of motive and perhaps uh, accomplices. All right. Former FBI agent, News Nation security analyst, Phil Andrew, always great to talk to you. You offer us such great insight. Thank you so much for joining me here. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.